Well, Merry Christmas, Cornerstone family. Thank you for joining us today. Come on. Let's worship together. Let's go tell around on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Amen. Come on. Come on, y'all ready to sing? Here we go. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. To go, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds kept their watching for the sign of rocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, they've shown a holy light. Come on, sing it. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds fear and tremble when the low above the earth bring out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. While we worship, we celebrate. Say, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Christ was born and brought us God's salvation, that blessed Christmas morn. Y'all ready? Come on. Whoa, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. See, go, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and See with the drums, Here we go. Come on, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. See, go, go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Jesus, that. Jesus Christ is born, that Jesus Christ is born. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. We worship you. King Jesus. Amen, amen. All right, all right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Come on, we adore our King. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, 
God's with us, He is for us. We worship you, King Jesus. We worship you.
rejoice, 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 Emmanuel shall come to be always mine. Yes, Jesus, we worship you. We thank you that you're the Savior of the world. That you are with us, you are for us, Emmanuel. You came for all of us, God, to save us, to give us a hope and a future. So we worship you. We worship you on this evening. We rejoice. We rejoice. We celebrate together as a family. You came into the world to bring us new life. So, Father, we thank you for this time. Pray, God, you just open our hearts, God, fill our homes. Fill our families with your Holy Spirit, God. Speak to us through your Holy Word this evening. Speak to our hearts. We rejoice in you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, all the families say, Amen. Well, good evening, Cornerstone family, and Merry Christmas. We are so glad you're here today, and I pray that if you're new, if you're joining us from out of town, we welcome you to our Cornerstone family here tonight. Hope you've enjoyed uh, the amazing music and the fellowship and the things we've have in store here for tonight. But if you're joining us online, we also welcome you to celebrate with us as we rejoice that our Savior is born. The big idea for this Christmas as we celebrate, as we rejoice together, the big idea is God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things, extraordinary things when we trust him. That's each and every one of us. You know, maybe in the season, you know, it's a busy season for all of us. And maybe you may think we're just ordinary people, but in reality, when we trust God, when we love God, he calls us and he gives us the power and the strength to do extraordinary things. I remember verse is Galatians 6, 9. It says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. You know, it, it's been a busy, crazy season, maybe in this holidays. And maybe you have a lot going on in your life. But I encourage you tonight to not give up, for God will see you through. In the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So the question I have for you tonight, as we were talking about different characters these past few weeks in the Bible who have been used by God, but tonight we were talking about Jesus. And my question for you here tonight is, who is Jesus to you in your life? Not who Jesus is to your spouse, to your children, to your family, to your friends, but who is Jesus to you? So I ask you that to ponder on that just for a quick second. Who is Jesus in your life? In the Old Testament, it talks about who Jesus is, that Jesus is Emmanuel, in the Old Testament, it says in Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel was mentioned in the Old Testament, but it was also mentioned in the New Testament. It says in Matthew chapter 1, verses 22 to 23, it says, Now all... All this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. He, and it said, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means 
God with us. I want to encourage you guys, no matter what you're going through right now, I want you to let, to let you know that Jesus is God and God is with us. Emmanuel first came from Hebrew, from the Hebrew Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The meaning of the word Emmanuel with an E comes from also the, the Greek, rendering the two Hebrew words, Emmanuel, which means with us, and El, which means God. So God, his name, Emmanuel, with an I or an E, it means God with us. The first point I want to make tonight is that God is with us in our rejoicing. Think about it. Think about everything that you rejoice in, not just the daily things. I mean, there's things that we rejoice in. I like to rejoice in eating, having a good time, having fun with friends and family, playing games, rejoicing in those good times. But even go back even further. Think about when you graduated from school, from grade school, when you graduated from junior high to high school, all the good times you may have had. You graduated from college. Well, most of us, you know, maybe not all of us have graduated, but you know, it's all good. You know, we all have rejoiced in a lot of different times. Think about the first time you ever fell in love. How many have ever fell in love before, right? Yeah, amen, amen. The first time you laid eyes on your spouse, that you rejoiced, that you had butterflies in your stomach and your heart just fluttered and your heart just beat or even stopped to beat just to realize how amazing your spouse is. And that moment that you rejoiced that you got married, what a wonderful, wonderful occasion that God has brought you all together. And maybe after that, maybe you got married. Maybe uh, you rejoice in having kids. You know, some of you have kids. Or maybe you're not rejoicing in having kids. It depends how you look at it. But we love our children here at Cornerstone. We love our children. But also looking at maybe that you have different times you rejoice. Rejoicing in maybe the first time you got the job that you wanted, your dream job. How many people will have your dream job? If not... If you have your dream job, praise God. If not, it's okay. You know, keep trusting in God. Keep trusting in the Lord, and he will see you through. Keep trusting what he has for you. And if he made you to do it, he will provide a way for you to succeed. In everything in life, we rejoice. We rejoice in everything because God has given us a heart to rejoice in him. It says in Philippians 4, 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. We are rejoicing here tonight. We are celebrating our Savior for what he has done. But let's, let's take it back even a little further. In Luke chapter 2, this is where I all began. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Notice some of the songs we've been singing here tonight. A lot of these come together, talking about our Savior's birth. The next verse says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and but the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. It says, today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in, in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with an angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. You see, our, our Savior, he came to us so that we will rejoice. He came to us so that we may see his glory in every aspect of our life. He came to us so that we can rejoice in him. 
and all of his goodness and all of his peace and all of his love and the good and the bad, even the ugly. God, he helps us to rejoice in all of that. And he wants us tonight to know that he is with us in our rejoicing. So number one, God is with us in our rejoicing. Number two, God is with us in our hurting. It says in Psalm 34, verse 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I'm going to be just real with you just for a quick minute. You know, it's, it's been a really, really rough season for me. You know, a lot's been going on in my life and my family. And, you know, um, seeing one of my best friends uh, have a bad accident and, and go to the hospital, as Pastor Red, it's hard to see him seem like that. He, you know, him being such a strong, amazing man of God, to, to see him at a weak point, it's been really tough on me, just mentally, emotionally. And just be able to fill the shoes he has, you know, literally fill his shoes. It's really hard to fill his shoes, honestly, physically, because he has he wears a size 13. He has some big feet, just, just saying. No offense, Pastor Red. We love you, but we hope you get better soon. It's been really, I, I've had a, a broken heart also, not with my best friend being in the hospital, but also this past week, my grandma passed away. My grandma passed away. She was, she was the aspect of love to our family. She was the queen. She meant everything to everybody. And with her, she had seven amazing kids, many, many grandchildren that all loved her. And uh, to see her in her last days was really tough. I got to see her twice this past week before she passed. And it was really rough. I mean, I'm just going to be real. And we all go through different things and different seasons. For me, it's been a rough season. But I want to encourage you that God is with you in your hurting. It says in Psalm 46, it says, God is our refuge. God is our strength. And in our ever-present help in trouble. Maybe, you in trouble. Maybe you're going through some hard things in your life as well. But I'll encourage you that God is with you. Being in trouble this past week, with, honestly, I, I've, I've had a broken heart seeing my family, what they've been going through. And, and honestly, see my grandma pass away. It's been hard. She's the last grandparent uh, of all my grandparents. And it, she, a uh, lovely, beautiful woman, heart of gold, she passed away at 89 years old. I remember one story that um, growing up, I wanted to be a, a superhero, you know. Uh, one in particularly was I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. Y'all hope you remember Ninja Turtles, yeah? I grew up watching Ninja Turtles, and I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. And I remember that I uh, had growing up a, uh, what was like, like a play toy samurai sword, right? One time, every, well, every weekend, uh, we would get dropped, me and my brother, we would get dropped off, and we would be, uh, watched by my grandma and grandpa at the time. At the time, and one day I had my awesome, amazing samurai sword that can cut through anything. I saw my beautiful, beautiful rose bush, the most beautiful roses you've ever seen. That my grandpa every day he would prune them, he would take care of them, he'd water them, he'd fertilize them to make sure that he had these beautiful roses every day. But I didn't see him as beautiful roses. I saw him as, at the time, being, I think I was five years old or something, I saw them as being the enemy. So what did I do? I, I felt like I should cut the heads off of every single enemy, every single rose that was out there. And all I heard, as soon as I cut off every single rose, I heard my grandpa yelling at me, see what that mean? What happened? I ran as fast as I could. He chased me inside the house. I ran behind my grandma. He was about to beat me down. 
I was about to experience the wrath of my grandpa like no other. I truly deserved it. I did. I did. I demolished his amazing, beautiful rope bush. I deserved it, no doubt. But my grandpa, I hid behind my grandma, and she said, nope, you will not harm this boy today, for I love this boy, and I want to save his life. See, the thing is, Grandma, she held back Grandpa's wrath on me. Even so much more, I deserved it. I deserved punishment. I deserved to die that day, literally. But her love saved me. Her love protected me. She was my angel that day. And she's been my angel my whole entire life. To look after me, to protect me. To show me what God's love is. And I can assure you in the same way that my grandma protected me, God wants to do that for, for you. Even though we, there's things in life we do deserve. We deserve punishment. We deserve wrath. But God holds that back and says, no, this is my child. I love you and I will love and protect you for the rest of your life, when you put your trust in him. I put my trust in my grandma. I put my trust in the Lord. And that's what God wants to tell you tonight. No matter what you've done, what, no matter what you've gone through, even if you've demolished everything in your life that looked like beautiful roses, God wants to give you a second chance, a third chance, a hundred chance here tonight to renew your life. Philippians. Chapter 4, verse 6, I like to call it the, uh, it says, the Philippians, the NIV version. I like to call it the J-O-V version. I call it the Philippines, right? The Philippines uh, verse, it says, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, every situation, by, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I say, what, what are you anxious about? What do, you, what do you got going on in your mind, in your heart? What do you have going on? Lay it down at the feet of the cross. Lay it down under God's protection, for he will see you through. There's nothing to worry about. If Once you put your trust in God, it doesn't mean it gets easier but it means God is with you. So we look at number one, God is with us in our rejoicing. God is also with us in our hurting. And number three, God is with us in our healing. Psalm 147, verse 3, it says this, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Maybe you got some wounds here tonight. No, I don't know what you've been through. But God, God's the only one that can heal your wounds. Maybe you got some deep wounds, you know, emotionally, in your heart. You know, and maybe you have had different controversies with, you know, family members. You know, especially during the holidays. It gets maybe sometimes a little tense, a little crazy, a little busy. You know, maybe, how many of you guys, oh, here's the thing. How many of you guys have done all your Christmas shopping yet? Y'all, it's Christmas Eve. If you've done your Christmas shopping yet, I guarantee you there's some wounds you might need to do or you, there's some wounds you might experience outside just trying to find parking out there in the parking lot. So what I'm saying here tonight is God heals your wounds. Psalm 91, in verse 1 and 2, it says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress in whom I trust. Just like my grandma, who was my refuge. She was my fortress, whom I trusted. And I also trust in the Lord, my God. And I encourage you to do so as well. As you know, one of my best friends, we talk about Pastor Red, he's in the hospital. You know, I saw him. 
uh, just the other day. He wants to encourage you guys all that he's going to be okay, you know? He's down, but he's not out. He, he has an injury, but he trusts in God with all his heart. He put his hope and trust in God. And, you know, he wanted me to tell you guys here tonight that he's going to be okay. And he looks forward to do all the amazing things, to hang out, to go back on his boat, to go fishing, to do all the amazing things. And most importantly thing is he wants to come back to be your pastor. You know how much, how much your pastor loves you? Not only me, but Pastor Red. He loves you guys. And he's another aspect of God that I can see that's been in my life to show who God is, that God is real, that God is not just some made-up person, but Jesus is real. And Jesus wants your heart here tonight. In Jeremiah 17, verse 14, it says, Heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. What are we praising, God? What are we praising? Every time we sing these worship songs, are we just singing words? Are we just singing melodies or songs? But are we really praising God with all our heart? For the thing is, he is the only one that can truly heal your wounds. We go through all these different things, you know, that we try to just numb our pain through drugs or alcohol or love or relationship or, or one relationship after the other or things that you think may fulfill us. But only God can heal those wounds and only God can fulfill our heart. In Jeremiah 30, Verse 17, it says, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. He will. He will heal your wounds. But you have to trust in him. And you have to put your faith in him as the Lord of your life, as the Savior of the world. He wants a personal relationship with you. And you can do that tonight. And maybe, you know what, maybe you've accepted Christ and you just need a recommitment. I want you to do that tonight. Tonight is the night. Don't wait till next year. There's so much crazy stuff going on in this life. There's so many things that we cannot put off our relationship with God. That should be our first and number one priority. Tonight, if you want to receive the Lord, all you got to do, is declare with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. It says that in Romans 10. Romans 10, 9, it says this. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You want to be saved tonight? I want you to be saved. I want you to know who Jesus is. Just like my grandma, she knew who Jesus was just by her actions. The thing is, people should know who Jesus is by how we treat people. People will know who Jesus is by our love. You know, it says that, that famous verse, you know, John 3.16, you see that everywhere on TV and sports games and all these different places. You're like, oh, I know that verse. That's the first verse I learned. What does it say? You know it says, well, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not die, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you believe that? By believing in Christ, you believing in the son of God, that he came for you here tonight. But not only 16, the thing is everyone knows the verse, you know, John 3, 16. But do you read to the next verse in 17? What does it say in 17? It says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God wants to save you here tonight. No matter what struggles, no matter what battles you may be fighting here tonight, God wants to save you, to offer you eternal life, to offer you his loving kindness, 
to protect you, to be with you, to walk with you through every aspect of life. God is with us in our rejoicing. God is with us in our hurting. And God is with us in our healing. And maybe you need to be healed here tonight. So just in a minute, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for everyone. Everyone part of our family and that wants to be part of our family. I want to pray for you here tonight. If you don't have a relationship with God, if you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you here tonight. And also, if you want to commit, recommit your life to Jesus, no matter how far you've gone, just like my grandma, God can save you. My, God, my grandma saved me from wrath, but my God can save me from eternal wrath. I want you to believe that here tonight. So let me close in prayer. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone watching this here this evening, whether online or watching here live, I pray, God, that anyone that wants a relationship with you, I pray that they would put their hope and their faith and their, and their trust in you, God. Like it says in Romans, if anyone just declares you, Jesus Christ, as Lord of their life and opens their heart to you, that you would give them eternal life. So I pray anyone would, that would like a relationship with Jesus here tonight, I pray they will receive you as Lord and Savior. And also, God, for all my family here tonight, all my Cornerstone family or anyone that's that's new or visiting, God, I pray anyone that needs a recommitment to you, they, they know you and they've maybe gone astray or, or gone uh, far away from you, but they want to return to your love. They want to retu return to your goodness and your kindness. I pray, God, that you place it on their heart to return to you. So, God, I pray for every family, every brother, every sister, God, here tonight. For those that want a relationship with you, they, they, they would trust in you. And also, God, for those that want to recommit their lives, they would lay everything down at the feet of your cross and put you as first in their life. So I pray for my family here tonight. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen. So I ask you here tonight, I ask you, who is Jesus in your life? Is he just some guy that we sing about on Christmas? Is he just a little baby Jesus? Or is he the Lord of your life to guide you, to watch over, protect you, to be with you through every circumstance of life? So I'm asking you, a few next right steps I want to just share with you guys. Invite someone every, every Sunday. We're here, 9, 15, 11 o'clock. <laughs> Invite all your friends, your family, your neighborhood. We're giving out free bread. Who can't, who can't refuse free bread? And you won't believe how much bread we get. God literally wants us to feed the 5,000. If you're hungry, come, come check out our church. Invite your friends, family to be part of our family. Number two is believe and accept in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you want a relationship with God, if you pray that here tonight, uh, please put that in a connection card. Please talk to a friend or a family or please come talk to me. I would love to talk to you about your relationship with Jesus. And also, three, if you want to commit your life, recommit your life to Jesus and, and to let him guide you in your rejoicing, in your hurting, or your healing. Let him heal you. Let him see you through all of your hurts and all your pains. That's my prayer here tonight. I hope that we had a good time here, but we, let us continue Continue rejoicing every single Sunday, but just not on Christmas Eve. I encourage you to come back. Join us live in person. We would love, love to see you. Until next time, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. I look forward to see you all soon. Let's continue to worship. Who are we that you would be mindful of us? What do you see? The 
it's worth looking our way we are free in ways that we never should be sweet
Jesus, we praise you. We thank you that you came into this world, that you were with us to walk through this life. God, thank you that you're with us and you're for us, God. We thank you for all the families at home, God. And I pray you just uh, bless this Christmas season. Continue to uplift us, encourage us, God, and help us to continue to trust you, to love you more and more each day. So, Father, we thank you for this time. Be with all the families. Watch our protect us and bring us back here again safely. Give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. All the families say, amen.